David Swanson is up. Uh, I know he's been chopping at the bit. Hello, hello, David Swanson speaking. Okay. David. Hey. David Swanson, I should say, is a leader of World Beyond War. He's also an author, and it's one of his noted books is War is a Lie, which I encourage all of you to read because it's an astounding book, and it he lays out everything really well. So, and he's also part of a group called RootsAction.org. So check that out as well. Good afternoon, David. How are you? I am good. How are you? Terrific. Glad to have you on. Yeah, now you can see where oh, I'm okay. okay. We thought you were on the beach somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sad. Yeah, it's be too hot on the beach maybe today. Too hot anyway. Okay, we, we got 10 minutes for you to... Okay, well, I, I thank you for including me, and I, I wrote down 10 minutes, and I'll see what you all think of them, and uh, feel free to yeah. interrupt me or whatever. Um, <clears throat> imagine you're stranded on a barren rock in the middle of the ocean, nothing in sight but the endless sea, and you've got a basket of apples, nothing else. It's a huge basket, a thousand apples. There are various things you could do. You could allow yourself a few apples a day and try to make them last. You could work on creating a patch of soil where apple seeds could be planted. You could work on starting a fire in order to have some cooked apples for a change. You could think of other ideas. You'd have plenty of time. Now, what if you were to take 600 of your thousand apples and throw them as hard as you could into the water one by one in hopes of hitting a shark or scaring all the sharks of the world so that they wouldn't come near your island? And what if a voice in the back of your head were to whisper to you, hey, buddy, you're losing your mind. You're not scaring sharks. You're more likely to attract some monster than to get a message out to all the monsters of the world, and you're going to starve soon at this rate. And what if you were to shout back at that little voice in your head, shut up, you naive idealist, socialist, Putin-loving traitor. I'm funding the entire island's Department of Defense, and I'm not sure 600 apples is going to be enough. Well, clearly you would be crazy and self-destructive and likely to starve sooner rather than later. Most people are not that crazy. As Nietzsche remarked, insanity is unusual in individuals, but in societies it is the norm. And that includes U.S. society, where the U.S. Congress takes roughly 60% of what it's got to work with and dumps it into something so loony that no fiction writer could get it past an editor. It builds weapons that, if used, would destroy all of humanity, and then it builds more of them over and over again, as if humanity will be around to use them after having been destroyed. It builds lesser weapons that only destroy bits of the earth at a time, but it sells them to dozens of other countries all over the earth so that when it's using its own weapons, it's usually using them against weapons it built and sold. It even gives them away to some of the most brutal governments around. It gives training and even just cash to many of the most oppressive regimes there are and gives more weapons to its own local police forces and trains them to treat its own population as a war enemy. It builds robot airplanes that can blow people up, uses them to create bloody chaos and bitter resentment, and then makes sure everybody else has them too. This war madness is based on supposedly defending oneself against enemies no more real than those sharks on that island. But in the process, the U.S. government creates small-scale blowback and some serious arms races, including proliferation of nuclear weapons. These activities take a heavy toll on the planet and its climate, air, and water. They justify secrecy and destroy government transparency, making anything resembling self-governance impossible. They fuel and are fueled by the worst tendencies in people, hatred, bigotry, violence, vengeance, and they leave little in the way of resources for everything actually needed for survival, conversion to sustainable practices, development of decent systems of governance. And when you ask, why can't we have clean energy or health care? They shout at you every time, how are you going to pay for it? Increasingly, some people, even some Congress people, are beginning to give the right answer. I'm going to take a few damn apples away from the military. To be sure, some people follow up that right answer with unhelpful comments, such as, the military will still have enough to keep us safe, or, 
we can get rid of the weapons that don't work, or we can end one of these wars and prepare for a better one. These are the people who only want to throw 400 apples at the imaginary sharks and throw them properly and make sure every demographic group gets a proper share of the throws. Remarkably, there is a resolution now in the House of Representatives to move 350 of the apples out of the grasp of the lunatics, a very reasonable proposal. And there are amendments to the big annual military bill in both houses with votes expected soon to move just 10% of the Pentagon's money to human and environmental needs. Surely, if we can recognize that states and localities dumping 10% of their budgets into police and prisons is a disaster, we can recognize that the federal government dumping over half of its money into war is too. And I know that $6.4 trillion sounds like a lot of money, but don't believe any of these studies that tell you that some fraction of military spending plus other resulting costs is the price of 20 years of wars. Military spending is for nothing but wars and preparations for more wars. And it's well over $1 trillion a year in the United States, over 700 billion of that in the Pentagon. If you were to take 10% away from the Pentagon, what would you take it from exactly? Well, simply ending the war on Afghanistan that candidate Donald Trump promised to end four years ago would save most of that $74 billion. Or you could save almost $69 billion by eliminating the off-the-books slush fund known as the Overseas Contingency Operations Account, because the word wars didn't test as well in focus groups. There's $150 billion per year in overseas bases in other people's countries. Why not cut that in half? Why not eliminate all the bases that no Congress member can name, just for a start? Where could the money go to? It could have a major impact on the U.S. or the world. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, as of 2016, it would take $69.4 billion per year to lift all U.S. families with children up to the poverty line. According to the UN, 30 billion per year could end starvation on the earth, and about 11 billion could provide the world, including the US, with clean drinking water. Does knowing those figures, even if they're slightly or wildly off, throw any doubt on the idea that spending a trillion dollars on weapons and troops is a security measure? Some 95% of suicide terrorist attacks are directed against foreign military occupations while 0% are motivated by anger over the provision of food or clean water? Are there perhaps things a country can do to protect itself that don't involve weapons? Let me suggest visiting two places. One of them is rootsaction.org, where Norman Solomon and I work, and where you can send an email to your senators and your misrepresentative with one easy click. The other is worldbeyondwar.org, where you can study the case for abolishing the entire institution of war, a campaign critical and central to the movement against racism, and to that for the environment, and that for democracy, and all campaigns for useful spending of resources. I hate to say this, I love to be more polite, but when we're dealing with survival, that takes precedence. It is time to start treating war funders as of questionable sanity as well as morality. It's time to recreate shame in war profiteering. It's time to divest from military contractors, convert military industries, and gently escort anyone who votes against cutting the U.S. military budget by 10% out of the halls of Congress and into the nearest padded cell. Thank you for including me in Peace Talk, and I hope to see you all in person soon. Peace. Oh, thank you, David. I forgot to mention that uh, David was a past attendee at Peace Talk. Well, that's about a few years ago now. At least, but, uh, yeah. Glad you came back. We're always glad to hear you, and I hope you have published your story about the apples. Have you published that? <laughs> so uh, more people not, see not that. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Thanks, David. All right. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.